If you're not familiar with SAS or LESS, these give you the ability to nest CSS selectors within selectors, allowing you to write more modular and maintainable style sheets. And for a long time, a big reason to use SAS was because it has the ability to use variables, but now CSS has variables too. Just like that, CSS will soon have nesting as well. This feature is currently in draft and is not available in browsers yet, but in this video, I'll show you how you can use it today. So what is nesting? Let's take a closer look at nesting and how it can improve your code. This example is from the draft, which is linked in the description. We have a table here that we're styling and you can see all of the duplication. We have to continually refer to table.colorTable. With nesting, we can group these related styles. This removes the duplication, improves readability and maintainability of the code. Now, just like in SAS, the ampersand is used to reference the parent selector. In this example, we're applying a font size to the list, then referencing the list item using ampersand to apply the padding. Here's what that would look like in regular CSS. We can even nest multiple levels deep. And here's what that would look like in regular CSS. But in order to nest a selector, it must be nest prefixed, meaning that the selector must begin with a nesting selector, such as the ampersand. And if you're using a list of selectors, each selector must begin with a nest selector. And back to our list example, if we wanted to target anchors within our list item, we can't just add A. It must be ampersand A. The same thing here. If we wanted to add a second reference beside item of divider, it must begin with an ampersand. Now, there's another way to nest using the at nest rule. This rule allows you to get around some of the limitations of the ampersand nesting selector alone. For instance, what if you want to select a parent that is outside of the scoped nest? We can add at nest. The at nest rule allows us to do this. It only requires that a nesting selector be somewhere within the selection. It doesn't have to be at the beginning, but again, every selector must have a nesting selector still. So back to our list example, divider would also have to have an ampersand. You can add the at nest rule just to aid in visually distinguishing the nested style if you want. We can even nest conditional rules such as media queries. Generally, you'll see media queries toward the bottom of a style sheet where you then have to reference back to an earlier selector to change their styles at various screen sizes. Nesting allows us to put these right in the main selection. But again, these need to contain a nesting selector. But one thing to keep in mind is that any declarations made after a nesting rule will be ignored and are invalid. But more nesting rules are valid. Okay, so how can we use this today? Well, browsers don't support native nesting in CSS yet, but we're going to use a post CSS package called post CSS nesting. I have this blog post example that we're going to convert to use nested CSS. And we're going to use Vite to quickly create this. If you haven't seen my Vite crash course, check it out. Vite is amazing. And since Vite supports post CSS out of the box, this is going to be easy to set up. All right, I have a blank project folder open here in VS Code in the terminal. We're going to type npm init at vite.js slash app, and then dot so that it installs it in this uh, directory. And then we're just gonna name this package, we'll say CSS nesting demo. And we're gonna select vanilla JavaScript and JavaScript. All right, and then npm i to install all of the packages. This will run pretty quick. All right, and then the last thing that we're going to install is npm i post CSS nesting and that is going to be a dev dependency so slash capital d all right that is super quick now let's just do some quick cleanup i'm going to close the terminal and then let's go into our html here and we're not going to use javascript so let's just get rid of this script here make up make some more room here and we're going to add our style sheet so we need a link and that's going to be style.css and then instead of this app div, I'm just going to paste in the HTML and then we'll go over. It's really simple. Okay, so we have a blog post and then each post has an image. We're getting a random unsplash image. And then we have our post body. Post body has a title, a date, and some text. And then we have our call to action. So pretty simple. Let's go over to the CSS now. And we'll get rid of this standard Vite CSS. And again, I'm going to paste in the CSS and then we'll go over it. And we're going to convert this CSS into nested CSS. All right, pretty simple stuff here. We are importing a font from Google font, a couple of fonts actually, Open Sans, 
and Orelega one. We've got a bunch of custom properties set up here. We've got some standard resets, signing our font family with setting uh, the display to grid and center so that the post is in the center of the screen. And then here is the blog post. And this is what we're going to edit. So we have our blog post, we have an image wrapper, the actual image, title, date, text, call to action, and a call to action hover and active state. And then we have some media queries. And you can see throughout here that there is a lot of redundancy. Blog post, blog post, blog post, blog post, blog post, and so on. Okay, so let's just test this out really quick and make sure it's working before we make any modifications to the CSS. So we'll open the terminal, npm run dev, and that will start our dev server. Really quick, let's open that up. All right, I'll zoom in a little bit. And so you can see we have a hover state, active state, and this looks really good. So it's working, let's go back. Now let's set up our post CSS configuration. So before we start nesting everything, we're going to get the nesting package to work with post CSS. All we have to do is create a new file here. So it will be a post css.config.js. And this file will say module.exports, and that's going to equal an object, and that will be plugins, and this is going to be an array, and we're going to say require, and then post CSS nesting. And according to the documentation, this is all that we actually need. But there is a small bug currently in the package with their default exports. So until that gets fixed, we do need to add dot default to get this to work. So right after the require here dot default. Once that's fixed, you can remove this dot default and it will work just fine. So let's save that and test it again to make sure it's still working. Go back to our terminal. Let's kill the dev server and run that again. And we can see it's still working. Nice. All right, now let's start nesting. Let's go up here and let's look for the redundancies. So we have this blog post and then we have an image inside of it. So we could move this up and over. And then let's say ampersand here. So this would be the same as saying dot blog post dot blog post image. And now here we have a blog post image and then image. So we could actually move this and nest it within this one. Like that. But again, we have to add the ampersand to the front. So now it is dot blog post dot blog post image image. All right, now the blog post title is within the blog post itself. So that could go here. So let's move that up. Again, add the ampersand to the front. Same with the date, the text, the call to action. Let's just move all of this up and then we'll modify them. So they just need to go up one line. We'll add an ampersand to the front of this one and this one and the call to action. Now within the call to action, we can add the hover and active. So let's move these up one line and then we can remove this part of it and replace it with an ampersand. Same with this. We can remove this part and replace with an ampersand. And then the media queries, they can all be moved up as well. So let's grab all of these and we'll move them up into the blog post. And now we can replace blog post with an ampersand. So let's just control D to select all of the blog posts here and we'll add ampersand. And that should do it. Let's save this. We'll go back to the browser and see if it's working. And it's still working. All right, so what do you think about CSS having native nesting? Let me know in the comments. That's gonna be it for this video. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.